trying to read numbers. Tell you what, when you start getting old, everything is an issue. Um, I had wrote a letter apologizing to a, I shouldn't say a, but I should say my pastor. Um, and I was telling him in this letter that I had lied to him. And this is going to sound odd. I had lied to him. Um, there was this moment that uh, a guy had walked into the restroom at the church. Now, this day and age, that's not uncommon everywhere, you know. Um, but what bothered me was the stalls don't properly lock. Not all of them work. And again, you have that everywhere too, okay. And I wanted to bring it to his attention so that we could work on it in the maintenance department. But I had this problem that it kept running through my mind that when I was younger and different times in ministry, when I would try to bring something to someone's attention and it was just something happened one time, my feelings and concerns were always devalued, um, laughed at, you know. Uh, so when, when I was trying to tell him what had happened, my mind got caught in that loop of what had happened in the past. And so instead of saying, I seen this guy come into the ladies restroom one time, I said two times, two times, um, because I was just, I was just fighting in my head so bad. All those, all those voices, all those things that had happened. And for some reason, this there was just this mentality, maybe if it was two times, you know, um, and maybe it would be accepted, dealt with. And then so I, I went and apologized to him, for one, for lying to him. It was just one time. Uh, I was explaining why. And, and the biggest issue was that I was thinking he and the church I was at um, would be like past examples. And, and I don't want to ever lump some people in a category. I don't want to ever throw them in a category and clump them together like that. I I don't want to be that kind of person to judge you by everyone else's past behavior toward me. I want to see you as an individual, you know, and, and that's the individual person in the individual church. So it really bothered me. And then I couldn't go to church to uh, giving this letter. So I, I made this little video and sent it to him apologizing reading the letter, which sounds crazy, but, um, have a hard time direct communicating with people over things. Uh, I have a very hard time. So it's a lot easier talking to a video than it is for me talking to people. Uh, and again, that's past experiences, but, uh, I've, I was caught in the ministry back in 2016 uh, and I started working in the nursing home and that was, that was, very stressful, but I knew God wanted me to start that way. And I only did four services with my little group. Um, there was me and my daughters, uh, my dubbed cousin, Tara, uh, brother Kenny and his brother, Eddie, and sister Donna. So there was eight of us in this little group. And uh, we only did for little services. Okay, so then uh, I went forward and I started working on the Mercy Ministry House in Huntington. So I purchased, uh, was purchasing a little house. I was uh, setting it up to do a clothing giveaway ministry. And then I became an associate pastor somewhere. And then something happened. And that relationship with the church and everything just spiraled and ended. Okay, it didn't did not go anywhere else. Um, when I said spiral, that that was the moment when things started shifting with me and what I was doing in ministry, and 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 then there's videos I've said that I've I've never been mad at God, and I'm really not mad, um, but I did get I'm gonna say mad, but you know how. Um, 
you get upset with somebody uh, because they're doing something for your betterment. You know, so whether they call you out on you doing something or if they're trying to help fix an injury like you, you got hurt and they have to bandage it up. And, and so in the process of them working with you, it hurts and you get kind of aggravated with them because, um, it, it, you don't, you don't want to deal with that. You want, you want them just leave it alone. You'll be fine. You know? And, and so I was kind of like that because in, in my mind, I was doing just fine. You know, I was working for God. I was accomplishing goals. I was reaching people. I was, uh, sharing the gospel that I understood. I, I mean, I was uh, handling and, and caring for people's day-to-day uh, -day needs, you know. So in my mind, I was working good. I was functioning good. I was accomplishing things, you know. And, and, and I was. I was. I, I was. I was functioning and doing well, you know. And I was accomplishing what I, uh, I felt was a lot for someone like myself, okay, <laughs> So when, when something happened and that, uh, spiral came in my life, that's when, uh, I was kind of hurt by God because that was the moment that that bandage or dressing came off and God pointed it out and said, we've got to work on this injury. We've got to work on this injury. You know, I, I was being, uh, productive and I was, uh, working to the fullest of my capacity, but God was saying, you can and you will do much more. But the only way you can and you will do that much more is in allowing me to open those doors that you can see what's hurt you and what's happening here, here. And the hardest thing in the world is getting a past things that are spoken to you and done to you throughout your life. I mean, that that stupid phrase, Stick and, sticks and stones may break my bones, but words will never hurt me. That is the biggest lie I have ever heard in my whole life. I mean, I will talk to people, even, even my mom will share things people have said to her when she was a little girl, and she's still so bothered by it. I mean, it just bothers her so bad, you know, because words hurt. Words have power. You know, sticks and stones, they have to be projected. They have to uh, be stepped on. They have to fall on you before you get hurt. So you have to come in contact with a physical item. But a word, it's not physical. It's something that, that can just, it's just spoken. And you can hear it, and then your mind will run with it in your imagination, and then you will tense up with it all through your body while you're thinking about what was said. Why would you say that to me, you know? And, and then it just escalates, you know, in the ear, in the brain, in the heart, throughout the whole body, you know? And those things um, really make a lasting hurt on individuals, okay? Um, and then if you're going through a lot of trauma in life, Sometimes you block it out, just completely block it out. And I'll have spells with that, that sometimes something will be said. And this was years before I was even called a ministry. Uh, something would be said. And then all of a sudden, poof, there it is. And it's like, I forgot that that happened, you know, and I will feel that like, um, racing heart or like I can't breathe, you know, um, and because I'm having that emotional response to a situation that I did not have an emotional response to. <laughs> so when it finally opens up, then I'm having that emotional response to it because it's finally opened up, you know? So yeah, when, when God first started opening those doors in my head and I started remembering things that happened, it's like, God, why would you do that? You know, I, I really did feel like I was, I was working much better. I was being more engaged with people. I was accomplishing things for you. And, um, I, I was upset by it, you know, but he had to open the door to take me through it, to get me to it, to turn around and take me back through it. So I would understand what 
was shaping and framing me. And what's holding me back from being more of what he wants me to be. Growing in God is not always easy. And the more you want to come to him, the more he comes to you and he has to reveal to you what the devil has done to separate you from him. And when you work through those hurts, you work through those things that have caused a division or a divide or a wall, a ditch, a, a valley between you and him. So everything, everything you've went through, God will open it up and put it right smack dab in front of you. And you have to look at it. And you have to feel it. And you have to be involved in it again. Not to your detriment, but to your healing. You have to. And it's literally cleaning out all the gunk from the hurt. Look at all this gunk the devil threw in you. And it has to be pulled out. To completely clean that wound and be restored and it's painful it's hard it's a process and I had put in this video when I had, um, couldn't make it to church I did this video so I could one read this letter to my pastor and and then I said a few times personally without reading it that I was sorry it had nothing to do with him. It had everything to do with what was in my head from past experiences, you know. And um, and even even if, if he doesn't see the value in those things, it's not really relevant. It's the process between me and God. And that's the other thing. When you're in a very um, controlling environment, and you're you're going to church because you're hoping while you're in church and working with God, um, because the Bible talks about he will heal and restore his people, right? So when you're going to church and you've suffered things, you're working to be healed and restored in him. And um, so you need to be able to work with him because he's the physician. He's the mighty physician. He knows exactly um, how to open and, and those doors to help you understand more of what's going on in your head and what you've been through. He knows. He knows. Oh, my goodness. Does he ever know? Um, so let me see if I can share this without. Let me think. It's like one of the ways he was talking to me was these patterns in dreams, okay, certain patterns. And, and as I was uh, walking and talking with God and I was going back and reviewing my journals from uh, younger years of being in the church and in ministry and um, just trying to understand what, what, what were these dreams about, uh, what keeps being pulled forward into the light, you know, then I realized, well, the pattern was all through my life, you know. And it's like I wasn't seeing it in the moment. It wasn't the least bit relevant to me, you know, uh, in that moment. But God knew how to show me in a dream a pattern. And then as I'm reviewing these journals and I'm reading about different situations, then it started clicking. Oh, my goodness. The work environment was set up in this pattern with these things, you know, um, as, as to the very situation I was in when uh, I was having issues with certain ones in the church, you know, a long time ago. Okay. So, but the patterns, God knew how to open those doors with me with those patterns, you know. Uh, so God knows, God knows uh, what we've went through, what we're going through, what's about to come to us. He knows. And so when you're in a church that controls everything, 
Um, they don't allow for that individual working like, like they would do in a counseling office or a doctor's office. You know, they're blocking the ability for us to come to God uh, and, and allow him to work with us in his hands as the mighty physician to heal us. And I honest and truly, honest and truly feel that is my story. It was never about... Um, uh, the doctrine for me in the beginning, because I, I had accepted it, I had embraced it, uh, I was living it, you know. Um, it was after uh, God spoke, and I was on the point of killing myself after my husband died. He spoke because he knew I was so committed, and my husband died without ever speaking in unknown tongues. So in my mind, he was straight in hell. and And because of that, God spoke. He gave me literally a lifeline, a single sentence lifeline uh, to pull me back from the brink uh, of suicide because he, he knew I would want to know why he spoke. And then that process started me on that journey of growing and understanding his word. And then as I understood the word, then I was going forth and doing more in ministry. And then there was the moment is like, okay, now now we got to get to that personal issue of you, of working with you. And that's painful. That's painful. Uh, so I wanted to share uh, that with you. Healing and being healed in God isn't always a miraculous snap your fingers and you got it. Healing can take years. It can take months. It can take days. It can take hours, you know. Healing can be a very long journey. But either way you go, fast or slow, it's personal. Because your life is your personal story. And only you and God personally know your story. And only He can personally heal you and work with you with every one of those dynamics that you went through. But if you will... Hold to him and work with him. He will heal your mind, body, and soul. Head to toe. Head to toe. I fully, totally believe it. I mean, there's just no doubt in my head. You know, so he healed my liver and it took two years and two months of my seeking and pursuing and trusting him. He healed my liver. So I went from stage four cirrhosis to uh, absolutely normal sized, healthy liver, no scar tissue whatsoever. And I don't even have a stage zero stage. There's nothing there, you know. Um, so he healed it, you know. And and every day uh, walking with him, I know he's going to heal and do more. But to have that healing, I have to fully fall in his hands and surrender and walk and trust him in the process. And you cannot do that in a church that holds you in binding conformity. You can't do that because in that moment, you've took yourself out of the hand of God for him to reel you in as to what he wants for your betterment. And you've put yourself in their hands for what they want and feel is for your betterment. And that rest in carnality, not in the miraculous divinity and sovereignty of God. So yeah, it's painful. It's a process. People probably don't understand me at all, but I keep walking and trusting God. He's healing me and he's going to heal me from head to toe. And I'm going to have more and more confidence and my body's going to be restored in him. And I'm going to go forward and I'm going to keep working and rising in that vocation and calling as he's healing and healing every bit of me from head to toe. So don't get discouraged. Keep walking. Trust God for the process. And, and don't, it's so hard to not want to get impatient and say, come on, God, can we work through this a little faster, you know? It's a process. It takes time. Don't, don't try to run it like a marathon. Slow and steady wins the race. And that slow and steady is holding to grace in God. Love you guys. And I'll talk to you later. We're in this together. You're not alone. We're in this together. Bye.